Question number nine, Dr Kennedy Graham. Order. Dr Kennedy Graham. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Prime Minister. Will he commit his government to accept citizens of Pacific Island countries displaced by sea level rise as a result of climate change? Honourable Stephen Joyce. Uh, Mr Speaker, on behalf of the Prime Minister, New Zealand has strong relationships with many Pacific Island countries. If rising sea levels caused by climate change were to threaten their long-term survival, which it is important to understand would be likely to be some way in the future, it would be my expectation that future New Zealand governments would look very sympathetically on their position. Supplementary question, Dr Kennedy Graham. In light of the response, what is the Prime Minister's response to President Anoti Tong of Kiribati, who said this week that, quote, for our people to survive, then they will have to migrate. Either we can wait for the time when we have to move people en masse, or we can prepare them beginning from now. Honourable Stephen Joyce, on behalf of the Prime uh, Minister. Mr Speaker, on behalf of the Prime Minister, obviously aware that the three countries with the largest potential exposure uh, two sea level rises are Kiribati, Tuvalu and Tokelau. Uh, and as the Prime Minister said back in 2009, New Zealand, of course, has a strong relationship with all three of those countries and uh, would be working closely with them, in fact, continue to work closely with them uh, on matters like climate change and a whole range of matters uh, that are very important to them and other Pacific countries. Supplementary question, Dr Kennedy Graham. Given that the IPCC, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, has warned for some Pacific nations sea level rise poses risks, and I quote, to their sovereignty or existence, will he accept that a specific plan needs to be developed now? Honourable Stephen Joyce. Uh, Mr Speaker, on behalf of the Prime Minister, uh, no, not at this time, but as I'd said at the answer to the first question, it is uh, my expectation that governments will continue to work closely with the potentially affected countries and would look very sympathetically on their position should the need for such an approach arise. Point of order, Dr Kennedy Graham. Uh, Mr Speaker, it has been established, I think in the context of my questioning, and certainly from World Bank and UN documents, that the need is recognised internationally as now, the Minister has responded that at some future time, I put it to you, sir, that the time is now, which is what I have tried to get across to the Minister. Yeah, and that, that point is certainly uh, open to debate. Uh, the Minister adequately addressed the question that was asked by the member. I'm on that. I may have that. Supplementary question, Dr Kennedy Graham. Sir, working on the assumption that the time is now, if that, even if that is a debatable point, will his government propose at the Pacific Forum this year that a regional relocation plan be drawn up, and if it's a contingency plan, so be it, to address the needs of Pacific Island states and investigate the capacity of Australia, New Zealand and other recipient countries to take displaced people from Pacific Island states? Honourable Stephen Joyce. Uh, Mr Speaker, on behalf of the Prime Minister, we will, of course, be continuing dialogue, not just with the Pacific Island countries and not just at the Pacific Forum, but also with our Australian colleagues in relation to the issue that the member raises. It may be helpful for him to know that I understand the Refugee Council of Australia is proposing uh, uh, something similar at this point in time, uh, and we do not know yet whether that's something that the Australian Government will consider, but New Zealand and Australia uh, have a close relationship on these matters and we'd continue to discuss them uh, at the appropriate times. Point of order, Dr Kennedy Graham. Uh, sir, I seek leave to table three documents, if I may. The first uh, is a UNHCR document dated May 2011, headed Climate Change and the Risk of Statelessness, the Situation of Low-Lying Order, is that publicly available off the web? It yes. may be on the website and out of UNHCR. It's a UN document. I think it's relatively easy for members to access if they so want. The second Se is a speech by the President of Kiribati dated 27 February 2013, headed Global Collective Action Needed. 
Is that readily available to me? I suspect it's I not. I do not so believe it is readily available, let's sir. Let's put the leave. Leave is uh, sought to table that particular speech. Is there any objection? There is no objection. And the final one is, uh, in fact, uh, a, uh, uh, an article responding to the Minister's point about the Australian, Australia being urged to recognise climate change. If it's an article, change. I take it to be a press article. It's a UK Guardian article. That's available to members who want to seek it. Will not be tabled. Question number 10, Mark Mitchell. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Minister for Communications and Information Technology.